Hello, this is Perry Winkle, and today I'm going to start a new series for the channel. I will be playing Witch Haven. I recently beat the game on my own, and I would definitely consider it to be a bad game, but despite that I actually had some fun with it and would like to record a series of, for the channel. If you've never heard of Witch Haven before, though I don't blame you, though I do want to say it actually does have some history as one of, if not the first game to have licensed the build engine, or at least an early version of it, which is, of course, the engine that had produced classics such as Duke Nukem 3D and Blood. A little bit about Witch Haven, though. From the Steam page, Witch Haven is a first-person fantasy slasher set in a dark medieval times. Dare to enter this 3D hell. Dare to enter Witch Haven. It's a retro FPS that is mainly melee weapon based. There is a bow and arrow, a throwable axe, and ranged spells, but the majority of combat will be done with swords, flails, and axes. It's also introduced a potion system, and honestly the three most important ones will be the health, strength, and fire resistance potions. I will say as well, always make sure you do have a couple of cure poison potions as well because there's a spider enemy that will poison you, and they show up a good amount in the later levels. We won't see them here today in map 1 though. In Witch Haven you take on the role of the Knight Grandoval from the Land Stagia. You've been tasked with assaulting Witch Haven, the lair of evil witch Ilwarin killing lesser witches, goblins, ogres, and other fantasy enemies along the way through labyrinths and dungeons, and it is set on the Isle of Char, leading up to the final map where you will kill Ilwarin herself. It was developed by Capstone Software, which is known for basically pumping out a few mediocre and terrible games in the 90s. It apparently also has a Capstone trademark with the randomly triggered jump scare face, was apparently also used in Corridor 7 by Capstone, though I've not played Corridor 7 at all. And not to delay any further, let's start the first video with Map 1. I'll be playing Witch Haven through Build GDX, as I personally find it much more preferable than playing it through DOSBox. Alright, so starting off, and I'm playing on normal difficulty, you start off with just the dagger. What I usually do is I go up here and wait for the infighting to end. You have the forest goblins versus, I think, the either the mountain goblins or the desert goblins. None of them have dropped a sword, unfortunately. Let's try and bait them over here. Their uh, AI is kind of uh, hard to get it to do what you want. You can generally, with Doom AI, have them follow you exactly where you want them to follow you, but these guys are a bit harder to do that with. And none of them have dropped a short sword. I've actually not had this happen on any of my practice runs. Oh, this guy drops one. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with uh, the dagger for now, I guess. I keep stepping on those crack suits. Those do do uh, damage, by the way. No short sword. There are a couple of goblins in here that can drop one. But we're gonna get another weapon in here anyway. And none of the goblins have dropped. The one of the problems with this game is that your weapons do have durability. And so in moments where the enemies are not dropping any weapons, that creates a problem. These are ogres, relatively easy to deal with. Uh, except it does not want to hit them for some reason. Alright, so what we're gonna do is break these open, and they're all empty. Oh wow, I'm having terrible RNG. I may have to ditch this recording, but we'll see how it goes.
Oh, there we go. Just to make sure that we... Yep. The sword is objectively, in my opinion, better than the mace. The mace is kind of one of the dumber weapons. It's uh, really slow, unless you do that side hit. But it seems to... Uh, one thing that I don't like about this game is that if a uh, weapon has two attacks, which most do, it will uh, default to doing just random attacks. I guess there is no default. I don't know why I said default. Uh, it's just random. There's no uh, way, like in Morrow, you can, depending on your movement, change the attack. In this, uh, I am going to be using quick saves because this series is uh, unforgiving with its traps, and the jumps are kind of... Uh... I'm jumping right over it. <laughs> There's another secret in this area over here. Deal with that goblin. And one thing you're going to want to be careful... Oh, it's, actually, it's not on this part, but... There is a part you're going to want to be careful on. This upcoming part introduces you to the wall turrets that shoot flames. I try to get them to hit as much as I can, but I can open up this fake wall here. And I only have one strength potion, which is unfortunate. I would be using a strength potion at this point otherwise. Just because there are so many goblins. And I don't want to waste durability, but I'm going to save this strength potion for later. If I had two, I definitely would have used it here, just because there's a good amount of densely populated goblins, and that's leather armor, the weakest of the three armors you can find. Down here. I'm not going to quite pick up those potions yet, because it auto-selects the most recent potion you've picked up, and I want to use the strength potion. Then quickly go in here and deal with the mountain goblins with my strength potion as well. Because they do have more health than the forest goblins. With that, I do have a fire resistance book, and I actually have two. Oh, that elevator's not down, so we're gonna have to go around this way. We're essentially heading back to where the strength potion was. That area, but not quite exactly that area. I'm gonna pass by it. Because with this fire resistance potion, there's actually a secret earlier in the level that we passed by because you really do want a fire resistance potion. Now, if I had three. I would deal with the enemies inside and use another one to get out, but since I only have two, I'm going to drink it, hop in, grab the goodies, and leave. He didn't want to let me leave. <laughs> there we go. But the reason I didn't want to use another one is because we actually need that for another area we're going to be hopping through here. right down this elevator. Now, this game, uh, as I said, was made on the build engine. It was actually one of the first games, if not the first major game, to uh, license the build engine. It was uh, an earlier version of it. doesn't have quite the features that Duke Nukem 3D has, but... With the fire resistance potion we saved, grab that armor and health potion. But you're going to want to be careful. This is a trap. Walk around the edge there. And while the fire resistance potion is still going, just do a quick 
pop in here. And I'm going to try to not let that run out. It ran out, but I was able to dodge the fire, that's fine. And killed all the enemies. And now this isn't like Doom where there's an actual enemy tracker, so there may be some levels where I just let a lot of enemies go because of the durability it weapons have. Um, but, see look, uh, I might even just do that right now. I should have used that strength potion there, I guess, but we're just gonna hop right on by here. We don't even have to deal with him. Since we got the pentagram, we can just leave the level. Essentially, the goal of each map is to find the pentagram, which unlocks the exit. Once you have it, you can take the exit portal to the next map. Unfortunately, the maps are also not named, hence map 1 in the title. In the next episode, we will be doing map 2. That was the first level of Witch Haven. It serves as a nice introduction to a lot of features we'll continue to see throughout the game. All in all, I'd say it's a good first map. It does have some traps that'll definitely catch new players off guard like the spike traps, and while they aren't tracked, it does have a couple of secrets. In the next video though, I will be continuing Witch Haven with the next level, Map 2. I hope to see you there, and I'd love to get some feedback on the video if you liked it, disliked it, or have something to say. If you'd like to watch this series as I make episodes and you aren't subscribed, consider subscribing so that future episodes appear in your feed. Also, if you feel inclined, you can turn notifications on to get notified directly when the next episode comes out. I do want to thank you, though, for sticking through the video to the end. I know it's extremely obvious how little experience I have with this process. Slipping up with my speech, cracks and bits of silence that I need to work the kinks out and get more used to. But I will see you in the next video, Map 2, where the key system will be introduced.